Our development platform is comprised of both a software portion and a hardware portion. The hardware portion is generally two pieces. The first piece that will be common to all of our sensor AFE platforms is the data capture board, which is called SPI-04. This board includes an FPGA and an ARM Cortex-M3 to allow system designers to com communicate with our device via USB cable to a PC. The sensor AFE device resides on the second piece of hardware, which is the traditional evaluation board. This will have the necessary hooks to easily connect sensors to our device. Here is a picture of, the, of our LMP9100 development hardware, which I will now demonstrate. On the right, you see the SPI-04 board with a USB cable connected to it. The SPI-04 board is used to collect the output data from the LMP9100 and pipe it up via USB to the awaiting computer. The SPI-04 board is connected to our evaluation board by a 16-pin connector where power and control information is passed. The pen-like device that you see sitting in front of the boards is a three-wire RTD, and it is conveniently connected to the lower left corner of the evaluation board. On to the demonstration. So when you first open up the software tool that's provided with the sensor AFE hardware, it opens you up to what we call a feature tour. Let's open up the tour and see what's inside. Inside, you have an index on the left-hand side which shows you all the different things that are included in the sensor AFE tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is merely to help you understand how the device uh, features and functions are appropriate for a specific application. And in addition to that, we give a brief overview of the sensor AFE products that National is offering. Plus, the, there's a description here on the software tab of all the different features and functions that this software package happens to have. So it includes things like the sensor and the sensor window, all the way down to saving and loading your files and measurement options. I will now close this and t take you through a brief um, measurement of a sensor with the LMP9100. So once you close the tour, the, the, end, the end user is guided to our help bar, which will take you through the device and the functions of, the, of, the dev of, our, uh, of our tool. The first choice is to select a sensor. Let's go ahead and do that. There are two ways, three, actually, three ways to select a sensor. The first is by clicking here. And if you were back on the virtual device tour, another option would be to click on the, pu the plus. Or you can merely click on the tab for the sensor database to choose a sensor. In this choice, I'm going to go with a three-wire RTD from Omega. So I will double-click on this sensor to connect it to our chip. In addition to it, the sensor being dropped on this front page here, what happens is that the tool has also done what essentially would usually take someone hours, if not days, to do. The entire device of the L all the features and registers of the LMP9100 have been optimized for the performance and for the configuration of this sensor. Let's take a look and see how the device has been configured. The next step in the help bar is to see how the inputs are configured. Let's click on that. Once I click on that, you notice that this block is now highlighted by this arrow. If you click on the block now, you can see inside here that all the options for this block have been presented to you. Essentially, with this, it chooses which pins are being connected to the main signal path. So you have a positive input select and a negative input select. At this point, you can see that the device, because we only have one sensor connected, is connected across VN0 instead of any of the other options. So it's connected across VN0, and the other is connected across VN1. Okay. The next block, which is typically programmed, is, is to set the reference. You can see this block is now highlighted. When you click on this, now you can see what your options here. You can see that our device actually has an option for two references that can be used for the ADC. Okay. In this case, reference 2 has been selected. And you can see that right here on the uh, block diagram for the three-wire RTD sensor that the VREF2 has been selected as well. Similarly, it, the, the three-wire RTD requires current sources. So when you click on the current sources, you can see that um, 
for this particular device, the 1000 microant option has been selected for the 3-wire RTD. You can see also that all the other choices are here as well. Okay. Further down here, you can see that you can go and choose different gain options, and it highlights this block. There's a gain buffer, there's calibration, which can be turned on and turned off. And you can just keep going through all the device after you have chosen your sensor to see how the tool has configured your device for your particular application. Now let's see what other options you have with this tool. You can see that step 9 here is leading you to the performance of the device. Let's see what that does. What happens is now when you enable that performance tab, you see what we call the estimated device performance block, which is right here. This is actually the performance that comes from data that has been collected on our test hardware and on the bench. And then down below here, it will be the actual measured system performance so that if you actually purchase one of our valve boards and connect it up to your computer via USB cable, that you can compare the measured system performance to the estimated device performance. Essentially, with the estimated device performance, we'll go ahead and watch this as I change the output data rate of this chip. You can see that the performance of the chip is changing ever so slightly. Similarly with the gain. There's impacts on the gain in the estimated performance as well. So, I've cho so when we chose this 3-wire RTD, it has configured us for this 26.8 samples per second and a gain of 8x to optimize the system performance for this particular sensor. Okay. So let's say now that we have uh, we purchased an eval board, we have chosen a sensor, the software has automatically configured our device for this particular sensor, and now we want to actually make measurements and see what kind of real-world performance we are getting out of our um, out of our LMP9100 and this particular sensor. Okay, so at this point you realize we've only been playing with the software. We want to make sure that the hardware is also configured appropriately for our particular setup. We provide a little button here that we call View Schematic, which I will now click on. In this View Schematic button, what we show is we show a picture of how, our how this sensor has been connected to our chip. It shows you essentially the three wires here. It shows you where it's connected. It's connected to this jumper 10. And also, it shows all the different jumpers that need to be set on the board for this particular sensor to, um, to be functioning with the, with the software. So it's essentially this, this provides the information you need to configure your hardware appropriately to match the configuration which you have done on your software. I will now close this window because I have already um, set the jumpers appropriately for the configuration which we've chosen here on the screen. Now we can go ahead and make some measurements on this particular three-wire RTD. Okay, there's different modes here. In this particular case, we have only had a we only have a single channel selected because we only have one sensor that you can see right here in this little sensor window. There's only one channel. You can see that channel 0 has been connected to this RTD. So that's for the channel number that we will be uh, measuring is channel 0 because that's the channel that has been, been chosen for this RTD. And uh, if we had multiple channels that we were going to scan through, then you would make sure that you had channel 0 to whatever channel you were going to make measurements on. So at this point, we're only making a measurement on a single channel. So that's the channel that's been selected. Down here, you can choose the different calibration and gain options, which is also available on your virtual device page. And then over here, for the output format, which you can see right here, you can choose between output codes output voltage and in this case since I have an RTD or temperature sensor connected I can choose and make act and actually convert the codes that come out of the uh, LMP9100 into tr real world values in terms of temperature. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and see, wh see what it comes up with. So right here below this output format you see the sensor characteristics. These are values that have been pulled directly from the sensor database table when you were choosing your sensor. So when you choose a different sensor, the appropriate voltage to um, degree C equations have been implemented so that when we actually make a measurement here, 
we can actually get real world values. So what happens here is I actually have a temp sensor, the three wire RTD connected. And in the room where I'm doing this demonstration, you can see that we are, prop we are, we are at approximately 23.49 degrees C in this room. If I hit stop here, I can show you that you have a choice between choosing any number of samples. So what you can do, you have multiple options here for your, how you're going to be collecting your data. You can collect data for as many samples as you want by putting, make, putting this number in here. Arbitrarily, it's set at 1,000 samples. Or you can choose the button to run continuously. And now this device, what our system will do, it, it will continue to collect data and display it on the screen for as long as you want to uh, run this application. So it kind of gives you a nice feature, a nice way to collect as much data as you could possibly want. And, and while you're doing this, let's go back and look at in terms of voltage. Because what happens is it's an RTD, which is it's got a PT100 value. And we're putting 1 milliamp through it. So essentially, we would get, expect a value of approximately 100 millivolts. But you notice that it's slightly above 100 millivolts, which merely means that we're not operating at 0 degrees C. Because 0 degrees C is the point at which the RTD would have an exact value of 100 ohms. So therefore, that's why you can see that when we convert it to temperature, we're at something other than 0 degrees C. Um, one thing that is also nice to, to a nice feature is the histogram feature where you can actually look and see the spread of the values that we've received. Lots of times people want to see that in terms of the output code, so we give you the option there. You can see how wide of a spread of codes that we're getting at the output of our device. This is also summarized right over here in the measured system performance where you can see the approximate ENOB that we're getting for our chip, and you can see the mean value. You can see the peak-to-peak -peak number of codes. So this is showing that you're getting a range of 275 codes for this particular measurement. So when we were talking about the device features, one of the things we mentioned was you can have multiple, imp multiple sensors connected to the chip. So let's go ahead and add another sensor. And, uh, and let's, in, this t in this case, rather than just making measurements, I want to demonstrate the calibration feature that I described earlier. So what, in this case, I'm going to put in a pure DC source and double click. So now I've added this second sensor. You can see now the first channel is still dedicated to the three-wire RTD, but now the second channel is dedicated to this DC input. And what I'm going to do, all right, it, it's assuming that I want to measure a DC in a differential fashion where it's connected one pin to VN2 and the other lead to VN3. What I'm going to do, because I want to demonstrate the, the offset calibration feature, is I'm going to set up my input MUX so that I am measuring essentially a shorted input. So I'm going to choose both inputs to be at, at uh, pin 2. So essentially I'm providing a common mode bias, but I'm shorting, pin, I'm shorting out the input MUX so that the input to my uh, ADC and gain amplifiers is essentially a zero volt signal. Okay. So let's see what happens when we do that. Of course, let's uh, set this to measure voltage. Because what I'm trying to do is I want to show you a circumstance where we know the expected outcome. We expect to get a value of zero because we know we've set this for a shorted zero volt input. So now let's hit run and let's see what we end up with. As you can see, we are getting very close to zero volts. We are actually measuring somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 28 to 30 microvolts. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop here because now I want to demonstrate for you what it means when we're talking about this background calibration. Remember, background calibration is something we said is good over temperature and time. So of course, we're not going to sit here for long periods of time, and I'm not taking the temperature of our demonstration room from one extreme to the other. So what I want to show here is the ability at any given moment to be able to zero out the offset. So like I said, here we can see that we have an initial offset of the device of about well, just below 29 microvolts. I am going to go in here, and I'm going to turn on the offset correction. And I'm going to rerun this application. And let's see what happens to this value. As you can see, we've essentially nulled out any offset that the chip happened. 
chip happened to have. Essentially what we've done is we've taken the offset of our chip and we've lowered it to the point where it's literally hidden within our noise floor. You can see we are achieving in the neighborhood of 19 and a half E knob for our chip and uh, this, is a, this is a very nice feature. One thing that I'd like to mention as well is I did not need to disrupt the signal to be able to do this. We are making measurements and correcting for the offset of our device as the uh, on the fly, so to speak. So there's no disruption, no downtime. Every single sample that we're collecting is a, cr a correct and valid sample. So I'll go ahead and hit stop here. So at this point, I've, I've done a very simple demonstration where I've showed, you know, connecting two different sensors up to our chip. You can see that the input MUX has up to eight pins, so you can hook up as many as seven single-ended input signals or four differentials. Um, other features that we talked about earlier were the reference sources where you can choose between reference one and reference two. This is essentially a reference MUX for the ADC to allow for more ratiometric measurements. So at this point, um, I'm going to conclude my demonstration of the tool. And in conclusion, I'd like to uh, mention about the Sensor AFE products one more time. Now remember, we've, we've provided you Sensor AFE products are a configurable device that works with a wide variety of sensors in a particular application space. For this particular device, the LMP9100, you know, we were looking at the temperature measure, the temperature sensor areas. We're looking at a lot of industrial sensors as well, such as pressure sensors and load cells, which have low bandwidth, low power requirements. So I, I hope you've enjoyed our tutorial today, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.